So we're going to do a full breakdown of why I believe Ross Barkley would actually be a decent signing for West Ham and give you guys a little bit of context on what he could bring to West Ham in terms of rotational play and you know what he'd bring on the ball. He has got some cons just like most players, but I feel like this is a huge huge moment in Ross Barkley's career, similar to maybe Jesse Lingard in the fact that Jesse Lingard wasn't wanted at Manchester United, had played any, played any games of football, sort of sort of forgot about in terms of, you know, the world of football. You know, people have forgotten about Jesse Lingard. He's come to West Ham, he's been fantastic. Someone that Lingard, of Lingard's calibre, who was, you know, well thought of at, by Gareth Southgate and and I feel like this is a similar situation Ross Barkley. I feel like he's gone to Aston Villa. And one of the big things you will notice regarding Ross Barkley, sort of his career, he does have this sort of passage where he gets injured for five, six, seven weeks. And he's had this so far this season because he actually started off pretty well for Aston Villa. Um, he got f two goals in his first five games, three goal contributions in his first eight games. And to me, Ross Barkley isn't your typical centre attacking midfielder. When you sort of compare Ross Barkley and Lincoln, Lingard. I think of Lingard as more of a creative player who will, you know, um, be closer to the striker, score more goals and maybe create more chances. And I feel like Ross Barkley is more of a player who's, who's a little bit of a deeper player in terms of a central midfielder that can sort of help, you know, combine from defence and to attack. But that's one of the biggest things of Ross Barkley is that is, is he has got a pretty bad injury record. He does seem to get an injury that will last five, six, seven weeks. And if we go to last season, 1920, he sort of picked up another injury. This is under Chelsea, under Frank Lampard last season. He had this passage where he's out for, what, five, six, seven weeks with the same foot injury. But he still played 21 games. And for me, we've also got to think about is if Ross Barkley's available for £10 million pounds or he's available on a loan. I would take him because there's a good chance we get in Europe. And having a player of Ross Barkley's calibre on the bench to be able to come on to have an impact, I don't think we can sniff at that because we've got to try and improve our squad. He might not come in the team and start straight away. And I felt the same about Jesse Lingard. I felt the same about Jesse Lingard. I didn't think he would start, but he'd come in the team and he... And he and he's made a name for himself among us West Ham fans. We absolutely love him. He's got back into the England squad. And I think this is a similar sort of fact with Ross Barkley. Now, I'm going to go to this, which is sort of a starting eleven that I've created based on you know players that we've been linked with so far um, for, the, for next season and sort of the way we could go. So I've started with a back four. I've gone with Fabianski and Johnston because obviously we have been linked with Johnston. I've gone with a back four of Cresswell or Masawaku, Ogbonna, Dawson or Diop, Soufal. Rice as a sit in number six. Don't forget about the numbers. I know, you know, it's not their true numbers on the back of their shirt. Barkley as a seven. Suchek, Lingard or Ben Rama, Antonio uh, Fornals. Now let's talk about Barkley. Now, the, as I was speaking about in terms of the kind of midfielder he is and what we would expect from him at West Ham is that he isn't that guy that when we go, when we are attacking, we have, you know, Lingard and Bowen here and Suchek, you know, he's, he's completely different different from Suchek. You know, Suchek is that guy that almost operate as a second striker. When the ball comes in comes in from either Soufal or Cresswell or Masawaku, Suchek is here with Antonio being a nuisance in the box, operating as almost a second striker to maybe get on the end of a cross that comes to the back stick or win a header. Barkley isn't going to do this job. He isn't going to do this job where he's sort of operating as a goal-scoring midfielder. He's not that kind of player and he never has been, which suggests by his the amount of goals he scored this season and just sort of through, throughout his career. What we could expect though from Ross Barkley is when we are playing, you know, a four, we can play a 4 3 3. When we are playing maybe a formation like this, let me just get these players back into position, is firstly possession consolidarity. I feel like, yes, we are a team that likes to counter attack and we like to get numbers behind the ball. We get Ben Rama, we've got Antonio sitting on the halfway line, and as soon as we win possession, we're like, boom, the quick transitions, players are going forward. And I feel like sometimes against certain teams that maybe we might, we should be having more possession against, we're a little bit cautious. But what Barkley would allow us to do is have that ability in the middle of the park to co to control possession with the likes of Lingard also on the pitch if we hope to keep him, to consolidate the possession, to have more possession. Because what I would see... West Ham being through attacking transitions is that Suchek obviously is that guy that bombs on. Rice will obviously 
he, he will sort of drop back into almost a three at the back formation, which will allow the two wing backs to push for, a little further forward. Rice can pick up sort of the ball from deep. Dawson and Obono will cover uh, the wider areas where Cresswell and Masawaku or Sofal or Fredericks are bombing on. Barkley is that guy who sort of just, sort of a deeper player to sort of just combine the defence to the attack. He's that guy that will receive the ball on the half term. And I think something else that Barkley brings to West Ham and that we've got with Rice already and we've got with Lingard is runners with the ball. We've seen with Declan Rice this season and even last season that only opposition fans are now sort of taking more mo notice is that Rice has got a fantastic ability of receiving the ball and driving with the ball. We saw against Arsenal, he picked the ball up on the, on the edge of the own D and he's driven into the... Arsenal penalty box and he's had a shot and we've got that with Lingard as well the amount of times that Lingard's received the ball out wide and he's run straight at the opposition defence to win a penalty for example against Leeds United Barkley's got that ability as well the ability that Barkley has in terms of getting the ball to his feet on the half turn he's a naturally built guy if you look at him in terms of his physique he's another lump you know, he's a quite a muscly guy. He's got the ability to receive the ball on the half turn. And then he has the ability, because of his fantastic feet and his fantastic movement, he can drive again with the ball. And I just think that West Ham, if this guy is available, and don't get me wrong, you know, he he hasn't had the last greatest last couple of seasons. You know, he's picked up some injuries. But we had the same with Lingard. And this guy isn't someone who's necessarily going to start every single game, especially if we get into Europe. If we get into U Europe, then he isn't going to start every single game. And I feel like us as West Ham fans, I don't know what we're kind of expecting at the same time. You know, if we're going to spend 15 million on him, I could then probably be like, you know what, if we've got to try and sign Lingard on a permanent deal... If we've got to try and sign, you know, maybe Tammy Abraham or we sign Johnston, Barkley on a loan, I think, would be pretty decent. Because also what this does allow is obviously rotational play. In terms of the positions that Bar that Barkley would be picking up, when we when we were attacking, I was speaking about Suchek, you know, sort of being that second striker. But when balls are getting played into the box, Barkley is that player that sort of picks up on the rebounds to sort of just sort of maybe consolidate possession in their final third. Soufal puts a ball in the box. It gets cleared. It falls to Barkley on the edge of the box. He might, you know just sort of return it to right and we go out either to left hand side and right hand side but what we can see in terms of sort of his position is the areas that he will actually pick up are sort of these areas here Barkley will pick up in these areas here sort of they call it the half spaces which essentially between the opposition defender and the opposition right back opposition le left back and you know left centre back it's the half spaces and what big clubs do so well is controlling space and if you're a team that want to get more possession on the ball then how you do that is how well you essentially you deal with space around you. And that is what West Ham, if we are going to become a better team and a more progressive team, because there's got to come a point in time where you know West Ham have got to adapt based on the opposition. Yes, there'll be times where we'll be sitting a little bit more deeper because we're playing Manchester City. But when we're at home against Fulham, for example, home and away, we got dominated in terms of possession. I would like to think that maybe in the coming seasons, West Ham would go to Fulham and we would have more of the ball. And it's all about controlling space. And I think the great thing about the teams like Manchester City is they know, and the Bayern Munichs of this world, I'm not saying that, but even Leicester, they know how to control space, which allows them to have greater advantage of the ball. Because what will happen is, is essentially this. So you have your two, you have your two centre backs, okay? You've got your two full backs that are high and wide. Rice will drop in as maybe you know as a third sort of centre back at times to sort of just help out with um with the defence because obviously Ogbonna and Dawson or Diop have come out wide to sort of just maintain, again, the spaces that are left out wide because of Masawaku and Cresswell because they're going forward. So if we just delete these, just so it doesn't look as messy, they're a little bit higher, a little bit further forward. Rice is here. Ogbonna and Dawson a little bit out wide. Barkley, Suchek. Now, in terms of controlling, controlling, you know, sort of the game. It's these spaces here. It's, it's these spaces here that West Ham need to start controlling if we're going to, you know, sort of progress as a team. And I think Barkley operating a sort of a wide centre midfielder who drifts in these half channels, these half spaces, the sort of, you know, moving away from the maybe an opposition midfielder, defensive midfielder, only allows us to have space for maybe Rice to go a little bit further forward or even Thomas Suchek here to maybe... 
go and go and support Antonio a little bit further forward. But also, Barkley has got some fantastic versatility. We have seen with Barkley that he has also got the ability to play as a number 10. He's also got the ability to play as a number 10, which obviously we have quite a few players that can play as a number 10. And we could see something like this. Barkley could operate as a number 10, just a little bit behind Antonio, supporting Antonio. The ball, he receives the ball from Rice or Suchek. Or even, you know, we could have Suchek operating as a central attacking midfielder and Barkley as a deeper one. Again, allowing Barkley, allowing Barkley to, to receive the ball from, from deep areas, to receive the ball from deep areas, and to allow him to pick the ball off the centre-backs and maybe consolidate possession more. But then if you have that... Then you've also got the fact that Suchek obviously isn't making those late deep runs into the box, which he's so good at because they're so hard to mark when you're having those runs from deep. So you probably would see the fact that Suchek would probably be deeper and Barkley. But I would love to see us to have a 4 3 3 because you see those big teams like the Man City's Barcelona's Bayern Munich's, you know, sometimes Leicester, whilst they do play a 4 1 4 1, but they can transition to a 4 3 3. Liverpool's, they all play a 4 3 3 because it does allow them to control space. And if we can control space, for me, I will take the gamble of Barkley because he reminds me of a similar situation to Lingard. You know, Barkley's in a last chance saloon, I think, similar to Lingard. He come to West Ham. If he didn't work out for West Ham, uh, at West Ham with Lingard, that, that was probably him finished in terms of, you know, the kind of calibre of, of team he could potentially join after West Ham. You know, Barkley has scored goals for Southgate uh, at England. He has got the ability. It's now if we can get a bit of luck with injuries, and that's the, his biggest con, is getting in consistent games because he can get. He normally picks up an injury that will leave him out for five to six weeks. But if Barkley's only a squad player, if Barkley's only a squad player, he's going to come in and you know rotate because if we are going to go into Europe, then we need we still need adequate backup that's going to be able to come in and do a job. Whether four nails will start, maybe we might even see four nails play a little bit more central. Um, at times in a 4-3-3 three, three. and then we'll have Barkley on the bench on the bench somewhere but then we'll play on the weekend on the Sunday and Barkley's playing in central midfield with Suchek and Fournals is on the bench and Bowen's playing right so it's important that West Ham have options so guys in the comment section down below let me know how you like this style of video I hope I explained it um, as well as I could really um, but I, I would take the gamble on Barkley. If it's a loan deal, I would take the gamble because I feel like 15 million is a lot of money because we've just got Lingard on a loan. We're looking to make that permanent. We've been linked with Sam Johnston. We need a striker. You know, we do need cover as well for central midfield. And to then spend £15 million on Ross Barkley would probably not be the greatest option. Not because I don't think Barkley is a good player. I think he is a good player. But I think... It, it should be more of a try as you buy, similar to Lingard. I think it would have been stupid for West Ham to spend 15 or 20 million in on Lingard. I didn't want him actually to begin with, but obviously he's changed everyone's minds. He's been unreal. But we need a sort of try before you buy. And if he's going to be on loan for a season and that gives us adequate depth in, in the Premier League and Europa League, I think we should go for it because it will allow us to interchange, um, interchange with you know, formations, we can be a little bit te more tactical, flexible. And when, you know, we decide to go to a back five as well, I didn't even, I didn't even talk about the back five. When we go to, to the back five and just, ima just imagine, you know, Rice is, I don't know, who's the third centre back? Um, he's a third centre back, all right? Not just for this, ju just for this aspect of the video, but he can play as a deeper central midfielder. You know, he could play maybe as a part of a two. You know, we've seen with England, like Mason Mount can do it. And Barkley works hard for the team. He does like to press high. He does like to, to work hard. It's probably why David Moyes has realised that Barkley would be a decent addition because he's decent on the ball. He works hard that he would be a decent addition. I think, you know, him playing again as a, as a two-man midfielder in the back five, it, it wouldn't be a bad option to have where we'll be able to rotate the likes of Rice or Suchek depending on the opposition. One, one game we might play, you know, um, Rice and Su we might play Rice and Barkley in midfield and Suchek because we've we've gone if we get in Europe we've played on a Thursday night somewhere you know Suchek needs to be on the bench because we've done a lot of travelling miles he's having the ability to be able to rotate when we can um, but yeah guys let me know in the comment section down below how you think of this video hit the subscribe button for more West Ham videos and catch you next time see you later